Good morning. Good morning. Ah, hang on. Let's just let's just not knock anything off the table. First thing in the morning, that'd be loud and not fun. Uh, we got a little little breakfast. How you doing here? Three slices turkey bacon, four slices gluten free toast with some jam, and one of these little Greek yogurts. These are six grams protein each, so that's 18 grams protein. This thing I think is 12, so an even 30. And then this is 26, so 50, uh, probably about 60 grams of carbs. I'm not super strict with the macros, as you guys know. I'll bring this a little closer now just so you can hear me speaking better. I'm not super strict with macros, but I follow macros tightly for probably like Two years, two years, three years, like weighing and measuring everything. Once you do that, like in my opinion, the goal of macros is always to not have to do macros eventually. <laughs> like to be able to get to a point where you know what an appropriate amount of protein, fat, and carbs looks like in a meal. And for a lot of people, it's just like the awareness of like eating each of those things in every meal and how to balance a meal and not just have a meal be too carb heavy like you know go from making spaghetti with tomato sauce with a side of garlic bread and caesar salad to spaghetti and meat sauce with the side of caesar salad because you realize i'm already getting a lot of carbs from the spaghetti i don't need carbs from the garlic bread also so anyways that's just kind of like what macros teaches you but could sleep last night our bed is like doing this weird thing here at the airbnb where in the middle it just goes like this so if this is like the right side of the, or the left side of the bed right side of the bed it just goes in the middle so and i think it's like that towards where like your torso would be so i kind of think someone has like broken the bed i've looked under it and it's slats and the slats look fine but as soon as you put any weight on them they just concave in so it's been an interesting adjustment trying to learn how to sleep on this thing. Last night, we literally slept head to toe. <laughs> like, I turn around <clears throat> and I put my head in the foot of the bed. Because I found I don't like being like this, my head down here, my feet up here. So I slept on an angle with my head up here, my feet down there. And I slept way better. But, anyways, I got this turkey bacon. We got it from Target. And uh, in Canada, all, I think, all turkey bacon are all, like, chicken bacon is fully cooked beforehand and it's just like cooked to desired doneness but here it was like needs to be cooked thoroughly uncooked cooked to a minimum blah 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 do not undercook and i'm like it's a strip of i mean i'm pretty sure that's cooked to death but i'm like it's a strip of bacon how am i i can't meat thermometer right? how am i gonna know so we just went for uh we just went for the best we could also on a side note Tried these last night for the first time ever. Listen, I don't even understand how there's a debate between what's better, Red Vines or Twizzlers. Red Vines stink. Like, they were gross. They tasted like chemicals. It tasted like, like artificial love. It was gross. Twizzlers all the way. And maybe that's just because I didn't grow up with Red Vines as an option, but Twizzlers all the way. I'm gonna eat, and then I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna wanna talk to you guys about that. I'll eat so I'm not chewing in your face. I think it's done. Still making noise. I think it's done. Let's talk about YouTube for a second. <clears throat> I, this is like a, a very interesting moment for me. I feel like in the last, almost, no, not almost decade, but in the last five years, six years of making videos on YouTube, doing it full time for the last like three to four, I've definitely learned a lot and one of the things that I feel like I have learned is that once you get something that's working, don't screw it up, you know? And like, basically what that means is like, a lot of the time I will 
or have in the past. <clears throat> been doing something that's working. And whether that be through a fault not of my own or my own fault, I will deviate from that and try something new and whatever. And like, it always affects the original thing, which affects everything. And the hardest part about making it on YouTube is doing something that stands out, which means either doing something original or reinventive or, you know, <clears throat> there are obviously just like super unique personalities and things that'll stand out kind of just of their own. But it, once you find that thing, it's important that you kind of like stick with it. So for me with the networks and golf, the reason why that channel blew up is because I was doing something that was relatively unique, right? And something that I think also suits my skill set. I have an ability to convey information, to deliver a story, um, to be a presence on camera, like whatever it is that makes people want to listen to me talk. It works and it's great. And once I realized how effective that was, which took me probably six-ish months last year, I started the channel to call it January. And I think probably by maybe the end of August, I really was like, okay, I get it now, you know? Because the first two times I traveled for the channel to go to Scottsdale the first time for the UVA Championships and to go to um, Dallas, Dallas, not so much. Dallas, there was some learnings, but in Scottsdale, I tried to vlog every single day. A little bit different than how I'm vlogging now, but similar. And it was on that channel and they, they did okay. Like the videos did fine. But the more time went on, the more I realized it's like what I do on that channel and the reason why it's successful is is what I sh what needs, should keep happening, you know? And the other correlate is, is that like I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy what I do on that channel. Like I really do. I love that type of format. I love, you know, being a slightly elevated version of myself, but in this way that's like talking, delivering information and storytelling. And I love coming up with the titles and the thumbnails and the ideas. And, you know, I love doing interviews. Like that's another huge part of the channel. And, you know, as the channel evolves, I've been able to like find and put together different additions, I guess, to that value prop of like, presenting the YouTube golf space. I would say that's like the general description of Nate Everson Golf is like presenting the YouTube golf space. Whether it be by like talking about news covering, giving opinions, telling stories, interviews, um, documentary and stuff, which I'm very excited to do tomorrow at the event. You know, go behind the scenes with my camera, document the whole thing. Like you, you realize that you have something special, right? And like, but it doesn't curb necessarily all of your creative flow always, right? And for me, what that creative extra desire is has always been around two things, really since I started this channel. But for forever it's been vlogging. I've always had <coughs> a reoccurring desire to vlog. And I think that comes from the fact that like I found YouTube through a vlogger. I first was introduced to YouTube beyond like cat videos and epic meal time through Casey Neistat, who was daily vlogging at the time. and. I think it's like, you know, if you're raised in a household that really hates ketchup, but really loves mustard, there's a really good chance your whole life you're going to hate ketchup and love mustard, you know, or if your parents didn't eat spicy food, there's a good chance you're going to probably have a hard time with spicy food. But if your parents absolutely love spicy food, then you're probably going to grow up loving spicy food. I was raised on YouTube by a vlogger. And by adoring and admiring and putting vlog content on a pedestal. So therefore, I think I'm always going to fall back and have a desire to create vlog style content. I don't think that's ever going to go anywhere. And I think I've learned to accept that a little bit, which is good. Because I would fight that for a while. Like, for a while, I would only I only made vlogs on my, on, when I was in the CrossFit space. And then I kind of fought it for a while when I started realizing that like my content where I'm just like talking to the camera actually does way better. And I try to still make vlogs or whatever. But when I started the golf channel is when I went all in on obviously just like the new style stuff. And even then I, I experimented a little bit. I would like put out some on course stuff. I put out some vlog stuff, whatever. But 
all this to say is that I think part of the reason why I'm so happy with having started this up, this daily vlog on this channel, is and tomorrow's gonna be a week. That's crazy, a week of daily uploads. Um, this is gonna be a week of daily uploads. This is vlog seven. Yesterday was vlog six, this is vlog seven. This is seven days in a row. Anyways, the reason why I think I'm so enamored with this and so excited by this idea and flow is because I, I'm not taking anything away from the channel that is the driver of everything right now, Nate Arbus and Golf, and what I'm doing there. I'm not having to put these videos on that channel, which are very different than what I put on that channel. And definitely the way YouTube works would negatively affect everything. One more. First sip of coffee. So, I think for the first time, I've found a way to like scratch all the itches, you know? To optimize and to do what's best for YouTube, the audience, you know, my business with Nate Evans and Golf, and then to do what I want and what I also think could be a good long play. Part of the reason why I'm excited about these videos is like, I think YouTube has been shifting and I think YouTube and the landscape is becoming re and the audience is becoming reopened to this style of content. And again, I've said it before about the success of Sam Sulk, Sulk, I always get his last name wrong. Um, and the reemergence of less produced, more intimate, it's called being a lifestyle creator, really. Like, my Nate Everson Golf channel is idea-based creation. Every video has an idea, and the video is about the idea. It's not about me at all. Whereas these videos on this channel are completely about me. Completely. They're not about anyone else or anything else. They're about me and my life. And you guys follow along as, you know, being part of my lifestyle and lifestyle-based creation. So those are the two main different types of creators on YouTube. And the... Lifestyle went away for a while with the Mr. Beast and the, you know, I don't know, the need for retention, title thumbnails, blah, blah, blah. Everything was fast and jump cut. And like, I think everyone is kind of, not everyone, a lot of people my age and up, you know, even like 25 and up, which is basically my age, but anyways, are getting sick of that. And, and you, you, you're overwhelmed, you're over inundated, you got TikTok, you got all these things, like, I, I want to be able to sit down in the morning. The YouTube I watch now, a lot of it, is stuff I can sit down in the morning with a coffee and just kind of like chill, you know? I'm not worried about someone yelling at me. I'm not worried about flashing on the screen. I'm not worried about whatever. And I can just like be there with them and experience something, you know? And that's what I want to do here. I want you guys to be here with me along this journey, along this ride and experience it all. Not just the travel, but like at home, training and golf and my goals, you know, I want to break 72 this year. I want to play in tournaments. We have a mini, we have a mini tour in Vancouver. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that, that I'm going to play on this summer. So, you know, <clears throat> and then, I mean, YouTube too, like I love YouTube and YouTube is such a part of my life that like, I'm definitely going to share a lot about YouTube with you guys on here as well. So. Yeah, I love it. I love you too. I love you guys. I love the opportunity to be making these videos again. But anyway, we're gonna drink our coffee. We got probably about two hours to kind of chill. <clears throat> we up, make sure yesterday's vlog gets uploaded. And then uh, we'll do a little more about mobility and then we're headed to the course. We're playing a course called Longbow today. Um, we're playing with my boy, Kevin, who made the good, good putters. He's the engineer that makes pretty much all the good, good products, I think. He's an absolute beauty. I love the guy to death. And then he invited two other guys who actually are some of my content guys. Um, one guy, Dial Golf, I think his name is, or his name on Instagram is. I think he's a short form creator, but I think I've seen him, like GM Golf follows him and stuff. So I think I've seen him in YouTube videos, or at least on Instagram. Um, and then one other guy. I don't, I'm not sure who the other guy is, but I think he's like an Instagram guy as well. So I'm excited to meet those guys um, and I'm excited to go out and play some golf. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to try to show you guys at least, you know, the how the round finishes because we're going to play 18 holes today. So 
I'm gonna try to dial it in. I think after yesterday, I kind of know what I need to do to uh, to clean things up, mainly around the greens. I think I just need to be confident with chipping. I'll go practice some chips before the round. Uh, I'm gonna get there a little early. I'm probably gonna hit like four balls and then I'm just gonna chip and putt because that's what I need to kind of like get the feel on. The putting, I think I kind of figured out a little bit towards the end of the round yesterday. The ones that are gonna still give me trouble is probably like like any kind of curve or downhill like five footers just because it's tough to commit to a line and hit it firm enough not knowing the speeds and then I just I want to get my chipping dialed so I can be more confident carrying the ball further but I think it's also supposed to be raining on and off a little bit today um which I don't think is going to make the greens any softer to be honest because I mean it's, it's like minimal it's like drizzle but it might give me an advantage here because I'm used to playing this kind of stuff but anyway I'll see you guys at the golf course if you guys watched any of my uh, golf videos I posted on Nate Edwards in golf a little while ago, my buddy Tyson Turchansky, he's the ex-CPGA Tour Pro. He played mini tours down here. Yesterday, he's the one who recommended the Ravens course. And then I just texted him saying I'm playing this course. He's like, dude, he's like, that's awesome. He's like, that was my other home track, blah, 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 blah. Apparently, unreal practice facility. So I'm very excited. We're like an hour early and we're planning on hitting a lot of putts and a lot of chips to try to figure out the green speed a little bit so my buddy kevin from good good is here i think i told you guys he's a guy who makes his engineer for them so he makes all the putters and everything which is pretty cool so we're gonna meet up and we're gonna get warmed out oh this place looks so good oh. all right kevin and i made a mistake today we showed up well i showed up and this is what i went and this is <laughs> At least I got the black one on. You got the uh, yeah. The well, the vest is one thing. It's the it's the That's exact pink. matching <laughs> pink and I mean they kind of go together, I guess, because of the golf clubs. I thought I was being kind of spicy with this combination. I uh, I think it's the Canadian thing, maybe. Maybe I forget you. Where are you from again? Toronto. Toronto. Yeah. Right.
Leave Vancouver, they said. Leave the rain. Come to beautiful sunny Scottsdale, they said. It'll be perfect. It just started absolutely pouring in the last five minutes. You hear that? You see that? I don't even want to play golf anymore. <laughs> Heck. I think they say it's supposed to kind of subside, like rain here kind of comes and goes. Got it. If I actually am playing golf in rain right now, I'm going to be a little, I mean, not pissed because it's warm, but. Hey. Planned enough, rain stops. Sunshine, relatively clear skies. Excited. Of course, looks great. Have you played here before? I have not. No, I. Uh, I mean, anytime you play desert golf, you see like contrasts of like green and so sand. Cool. It's like so good. But, yeah. I'm not used to this nice sand. <laughs> Just caught too much of it.
That may have been the shot of my life right there. 225 out. Had to hit a draw around that tree. Whew, with the hybrid. Let's go. Might have been one of the better pars I've made this entire trip. That felt pretty great. All right, so far this is one of those rounds where I actually don't know where I'm at. Kevin's keeping track. Plus, that was a par two over, front nine. Two over on the front nine right now. We had a birdie, three bogues. That was a great par, a couple great pars. Most of the bogeys were on balls, that uh, blind tee shots getting out of position. I'm vibing with this, man. I'm trying my best not to complain, by the way, that like my hands are cold and it's raining. I'm trying my best not to complain. Got some fish and chips coming up at the turn. I didn't think I'd be happy to come inside the clubhouse to warm up <laughs> Arizona. That's it, I'm not complaining. I looked right at it, maybe a little right. Yeah. All right, well, I mean, listen, for Arizona rain and cold, that was a good amount of fun. The fact that I was sniffly nose and my fingers hurt, you know, I it's I traveled halfway across North America for sunshine, but good golf as well, and good golf is what we got. That was a lot of fun. We, uh, I couldn't film every shot on the back nine because my phone was starting to run out of battery. I think the cold was draining it a little bit. And I, I have no idea how to get back to the Airbnb, so I needed it not to die. So we just filmed the tee shots, and then that last par five, I figured I could get away with maybe filming that one. That was actually crazy. I don't know if you guys could really make it out. I kind of just put the phone down. We were kind of rushing to finish, and uh, I just filmed. I didn't film me. Like I, I was hitting the bunk shot. You guys saw the ball hitting land, but that was one of the shots of the day for me by far, hitting that bunker shot, landing it tap in birdie we birdied all of the par fives there's only three of them today. it was par 71 but on the back i hit i had um tap in birdies on both par fives and eagle putt on the first and then uh that obviously stand shot on that last one we started the back nine we were three so we shot two over on the front nine and then we were three over through four on the back nine and then i so three over through four to start the back nine and then i went two under through five to finish the back nine so that means we finished the back nine one over which means we shot 74 which is holy crap i'm just doing that math right now that's awesome we shot 75 yesterday or was it yesterday it was the last round i filmed 18 holes we shot 75 and then just finished with that 
74. So, I mean, the game's trending. I thought we were really going off the rails on that back to finish as I went, I bogeyed three holes in a row. Like I said, I was three over on the back four. So I bogeyed 10, 11, 12, par 13. And I think it was a par five. It was either that one or the next one. But then it was just pars on the par three and the par fours and then birdied the two par fives there to finish off so i mean whew, listen i am ecstatic with that especially for it being like kind of cold and us being kind of rushed and you know and it's just like that you're kind of like it's wet and cold and like you're just kind of trying to get through it a little bit i was enjoying it but you know it's not like you're like super focused on every single shot so to still have that outcome that's a good one anyway i'm gonna pack up we're headed back to the area and now and I can't let my phone die because then I just will never get back to the Airbnb and you guys will never hear from me again because I'll just be lost and dead somewhere. So I'll see you in a bit. We're back. Do you need this light? Yeah, this light makes it look better. The lights in here are a little bit uh, hospital, so it's not the most fun lighting situation ever. I'm just making some, uh, some rice on the stove right now for dinner, rice and some chicken. Just trying to keep it simple. I talked about nutrition in the last video but when you're traveling at least when i'm traveling i accept that like every every day i'm probably gonna have a meal that's like not ideal like today i had fish and chips at the turn and i've been kind of feeling it ever since a little just like that grease a couple days in a row yesterday we had the chick-fil-a and we ate out for breakfast so it's just like a little bit of that food but control what you can control and when we're home i'm gonna try to eat like relatively clean every time so like this morning i had a perfectly normal clean breakfast i had rice and chicken before the course then obviously on the course now i'm gonna have some rice and chicken again i just had an apple and then probably a little snack later but trying to control what you can control but i'm really actually super happy with how the round went today and how the golf's been going in general like i was just thinking about it oh i was getting cleaned up and doing my mobility and stuff but like this is legitimately I think the best golf I've ever played, like ever. Uh, as far as like, again, my short game's always been the best part of my game. And it's always been, I would say like probably above average for like a scratch or worse golfer. Um, I think my short game in and of itself is like at scratch level. Like that's a bold statement, but I really, I play with a lot of scratch golfers, play with a lot of pro golfers. My short game is, is quite solid, uh, especially like within 50 yards and then on the greens. But it's always been, for me, like 125 to 200 yards. That's always been my struggle. Off the tee, I've never hit it super far, but I can hit it in play most of the time. Um, but I've definitely struggled with like hitting greens and not just totally relying on my short game. But the ball striking ever since, I mean, the two big changes are like dropping that, like feeling like my right hip's coming back and then coming through the ball, like actually moving my hips in the swing. And then feeling kind of loose in the arms and feeling like my hands are coming through the ball, which I'm sure is probably like releasing. I don't know. I don't know much about the golf swing, but again, I'm sure it's not technically sound or doesn't look great, but like it's been working and the compression I'm getting on the golf ball, the clean strikes, like I'm hitting so many greens, I'm hitting my numbers. Like it's just, it's very different. I'm not having to rely on my short game. So then when I am relying on my short game, it's like maybe to make the odd par, it's not like trying to save a bogey like it has been in the past so it's just crazy and also like running the numbers like literally i don't think i've ever shot 75 or better two rounds in a row ever and the last two 18 hole rounds i've played one of them at the heart one of the hardest courses in vancouver in winter conditions shot a 75 and then today in arizona of course i've never played before in horrible conditions for arizona especially like it was like 15 degrees celsius raining and windy and we shot a 74 par 71 but we shot a 74 with a near eagle hole out on the last, like birdied all the par fives. Every par five that day I birdied. It's just, it's crazy, man. And that's one thing that I've noticed is like, I'm really able to take advantage of par fives now. I can hit it decent off the tee, I can get it in play. I can whack it up close to the green and then get up and down and make a birdie. Or if I get on the green too, but like, it's been, it's been different. And I really do think I'm playing the best golf ever. I think today was a really good example of that. So it's cool. It's funny because Obviously, the last round you guys saw, nine holes, I shot five over across the front nine. I'm not counting that because that was only nine holes. And I that was fully, I think, just like adjusting to the green speeds. Oh, my eyes spoiling. Just adjusting to the green speeds of, you know, being here and having everything running so much faster. And 
I basically lost my biggest advantage in the short game. But even that round, like my ball striking was still like as solid as it has been. And so the mix of that with the short game is just, it's cool. It's cool. So I'm feeling really good about the game where it's at. And it's pretty fun to come down and try it at some different courses. So I don't know how many more rounds we're going to get in. I think Friday is supposed to be really nice weather-wise. Um, so if it's sunny, I'll definitely try to get out. I think we're probably going to do waste management on Thursday is the plan. And then obviously tomorrow, wow, coming up real quick already. The next time you guys see me, it will be, well, actually, heads up for all you guys in the vlog. Like th today, the day you're seeing this, I'm going to try to put out the behind the scenes video from the event, the Guga Desert Open. That'll be on Nate Edwards and Golf. Um, and I'm going to try to put it out like the night of. So come back. I mean, it'll be late. It'll probably be the next morning, but like in like the wee hours in the morning. But as soon as I have it done, I'm going to come home. I'm going to edit it. And I'm going to try to put it out. So stay tuned for that. You guys might get kind of an early look at it because you might be the only ones that know what's coming out if you're awake. But I guess very excited for that. Thursday, waste management. Friday, probably play some more golf. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button. Hope you're enjoying. See you in the next one.